because uh, police officers in Essex have dropped the probe into the journalist Alison Pearson. She's a, a columnist for the T Daily Telegraph over a social media post from over a year ago. This was Remembrance Sunday that they came to her door at 20 to 10 in the morning and uh, said that she was under investigation. Well, Harry Miller is a former police officer. He's founder of Fair Cop. And Harry, this has prompted a big discussion about free speech. It's prompted a big discussion about non-crime hate incidents as well, which Alison Pearson said that she was told she was under investigation for. Essex Police deny that. Uh, they say they've got body cam footage and all the rest of it. The point is that it is about free speech. It is about what we put into the public domain. And Harry, I know you yourself are someone who has had problems as a result of this. Perhaps you could tell us your story. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I'm not putting out the bunting over Essex police dropping their case against... Shouldn't have happened in the first place. No, and the thing is, it is happening far too often. Under the old model, what would happen is that the police would, would look at objective evidence uh, from a complainant, they would set that against the law and decide whether it met the threshold for an investigation. You would then be told what law it was that you'd broken and they would present you with the evidence. But unfortunately, that model has been dispensed with in favour of a much more sinister model, which is where the police come knocking, they don't disclose to you any of the evidence, they're very unclear about what crime it is you've committed, but it's generally got something to do with malicious communications or the online safety act or something like that but they're very very vague about it mm. and they leave you hanging and what this does it destroys your soul it destroys your credibility it is a form of state-sponsored harassment which is entirely unacceptable in a civilized society and, and harry just inter what, what? Inter just interject for one second harry i agree with every single word you're saying we also have the absurd situation where the director of public prosecution stephen parkinson who uh, has taken over the job a few people in between but the keir starmer did previously didn't know what non-crime hate incidents were he said to the times newspaper a few days ago that he had to look up what they were yet there are more than 12,000 of these that have been issued over one year alone. Yeah, absolutely. And around about something like 300,000 uh, have been issued since uh, since they were invented in 2014. Now, what the, the amazing thing about this is that I took the College of Policing through the High Court and to the Court of Appeal to get these things denounced and made illegal, made unlawful. But it seems that the police have not got the memo. They continue to dish them out like sweeties um, without any care whatsoever about the consequence to the individual. When you have a non-crime hate incident against your name, it is on a crime report. You are named as the suspect of a crime and it's, it's disclosable for up to six years on an enhanced DBS check. And what is so terrible about this is there is very little way, uh, there is no way really, no process no transparent process of getting them removed. It's as simple as that. And it doesn't help that the government, that Yvette Cooper, our Home Secretary, is urging police to do more of this, to resurrect non-crime hate incidents, because in her mind, this was a policy of the old Conservative government, which is entirely wrong. They were banned not by the Conservative government, but by the Court of Appeal. And Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, does not have the right to simply overturn a high court ruling and encourage police officers to embark on this kind of obscene behaviour. It needs to stop, and it needs to stop now. And heads need to roll, quite frankly. And just remind us, Harry, of your own experience with this. Uh, yeah, well, I was I, I was investigated in 2019 uh, for basically stating that um, women don't have penises. Um, and this was this this they said did not meet the threshold of a crime, but was so dangerous that it needed to be recorded as a non-crime hate incident. And the rationale for this that was that unless the police intervened, that I would escalate in my behaviour through criminality, through assault to, and I am not exaggerating here, all the way through to genocide. That Gen was sorry, the, sorry, genocide. genocide. genocide yeah. Wow. Genocide. They're, so they're going to, yeah. I mean, it, it, there are just so many levels on which that is absolutely absurd. But the thought that, you know, if you just get a get a non-crime hate incident recorded against you, you therefore don't, won't go on to, to commit genocide. I mean, we, we have the situation with you, Harry, that you've just described there, saying that women don't have penises. We also have a situation where Ian Austin, Lord Austin, the Labour uh, former MP, now a member of the House of Lords, said that Hamas terrorists are Islamists which is a fact and which is something that I think that not even Hamas actually would, would bristle against necessarily. 
So we're in a situation where he stated a fact, you stated a fact, objective facts, and nonetheless you have this non-crime hate incident against you. The world's gone mad. Yeah, that's because they're, they're, the government is curating what facts we are allowed to adopt and, and speak and what facts we are not allowed to adopt or speak. And this is why, much as I loathe the European Union and the ECHR, Article 10 is actually quite a useful tool still because it protects our right to freedom of speech and to hell if somebody is offended by it. Uh, as, as, the, as the judge said in my ruling, uh, a freedom that does not include the right to, be, to offend is not a freedom worth having. No, one, no one has the right not to be not offended. No one way. has the right not to be offended. Harry, you make some really good points, really interesting talking to you. Thank you. Harry Miller there, uh, former police officer, founder of Fair Cop, reacting to that breaking news this afternoon that the police force in Essex, Essex Police, have dropped the probe into the journalist Alison Pearson over a social media post that was from over a year ago.